Here recently, I was at a local craft fair and I spotted these really cool looking lighthouse yard ornaments. These would be great out in a lot of people's yards, but at the time, I was not all that interested in buying one. But I've yet gone back and realized that some of you probably would like these. So let's see if we can make one. Now all I have to go by for the dimensions are the pictures, so let's see how close we can get them. Now looking at the base in the pictures, it appears that they're made out of landscape timbers. Now this type of wood is usually pressure treated, so use this at your own risk. I'm going to cut this wood down with a miter saw, but if you don't have a miter saw, if you're very careful, you could use a circular saw or even a hand saw if that's all you have. From the pictures, it looks like the wood is at about 7 inches, 6 inches, and 4 inches, but this is just an estimate, so modify that as much as you want. Now that I have these cut, they might be a little bit on the short side, but that's okay. I'm going to use them as is, and if you would like, you can make them a little bit taller. Now the wood I'm using has a big tendency to splinter, so I'm going to take some sandpaper and just gently go over basically all surfaces just to get rid of those because some of those splinters hurt. I've gotten a couple already. If we zoom in on the base in the picture, it looks almost like the wood is burned. But considering this is pressure treated wood, I don't think burning it would be very wise. So another option might be this charred wood accelerator. If you've never tried this before, you're supposed to apply it just like a stain and it's supposed to give that burnt appearance to your wood. But before we test it out on our fully prepped pieces, I'm gonna test it out on that remaining board. And just like every other stain, make sure you stir it really good. While I was stirring this, I read here on the back and it says it's best for bare or untreated wood. So uh, this will be a test for both of us. So far this is looking pretty good. It has a nice grain structure showing here on the end and on the top. I'm gonna give this some time to dry and just in case it might lighten up. I probably should mention that I've had this wood sitting in my building for a while drying out so it's not wet like you'd buy directly from the store and that could be why it's taking the stain really well. While that charred stain was drying, I decided I wasn't 100% sold on it. So I cut down a couple more pieces of wood and put a weathered gray on one and an aged brown on the other. Now I can see a good side-by-side -side comparison just to make the final choice. While those are drying, let's start in the lighthouse. And to do that, we're going to use a 2x6. Now I believe a 7-inch section should work well. Next up, determine which side is the top. and We need to come down about an inch, make a mark, and come in about an inch and make a mark. Then using some kind of a straight edge, we want to connect those two lines together. Next, I'm going to draw a line from this intersection all the way to this corner. And of course do the same on the opposite side. Now I'm going to use a bandsaw to cut out these little triangles, but if you don't have a bandsaw that's okay. You can use a jigsaw or even a handsaw. It's a good idea to go over these edges with some sandpaper to keep them from being so sharp. That should be enough time for these stains to dry. Now looking at the weathered gray, well it doesn't look very much different than it did from the original wood. Maybe the pressure treating that's on it just doesn't allow it to stain it very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and rule this one out. Now this is the original charred one and this is the brown. Uh, the brown's pretty, but I don't think it works well for what we're doing. So I'm gonna stick with the charred. Now while I'm staining this, I'm gonna try and wipe this on and then wipe off any excess real quick to minimize any excess black on there. So let's give this a shot. Also, I found just right off, if you do this real thin, oh yeah, it's coming out nice. Now they may not be perfect, but they're definitely good enough for an outside project. For the lighthouse, I needed a good solar light. So I purchased this, it's like a $6 version at my local store. And this one has a solar light, but it's one of those really big bulbs. So this should really glow nicely. If we were to use this light as is with the wooden section here, we would literally have to drill a hole all the way through the center of this lighthouse. And that means I would have to drill in from both sides, making sure to hit that middle spot exactly perfect. And uh, that would be difficult to do, so let's not do that. But instead, let's see if we can take a pipe cutter and actually trim down this metal base. That way we can still insert it in, but only about two, two and a half inches. Now this is being a little more difficult than I thought it would be because the metal is deforming, it's so thin. But uh, we're gonna keep trying. Oop, almost, there we go. There we go. Now to drill out the hole in the top of your lighthouse, I'd suggest using a Forstner bit because it should give one of the cleanest cuts. I tested out the one inch bit and the scrap piece of wood. Let's see how well they fit together. 
Oh yeah, that's a nice fit. Let's see how easy it is to pull apart. Oh, wait, hey! I just realized that the base actually comes off of the light. I thought it was a permanently attached to it, but I guess since it was such a tight fit in this wood, it just popped right off. That would have made it so much easier to cut, but that's okay. Now the drill at this hole, I'm gonna use a drill press, but if you don't have a drill press, that's okay. You can use a standard drill to do this as long as you clamp down your lighthouse really well so it doesn't move around. And then just make sure that when you're drilling, you can be straight up and down as possible. Let's test this out. Oh yeah, it's not completely down in there, but that's okay. It gives a little bit of extra room. So now let's attach the light. Oh yeah. Ooh, good thing it didn't go all the way down in there. It might be a little bit hard to tell, but there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch between the light and that pipe, so that's a perfect fit. Next, we need a way to attach the bottom of this lighthouse to the top of this post. And I came up with three options for this. We could glue it to the top of the post, which would make it permanent. We could possibly use a pocket screw in the back of this, but then you'll always have a hole in the back. Or you could use part of the remaining pipe, drill another hole in the bottom of the lighthouse, drill a hole in the top of the post, and that'll allow this lighthouse to be able to pivot anytime you want to move it around. Choose whatever works best for you, but I like option number three. With the lighting now figured out, it's time for painting. If we look back at the original pictures, they have the bottom and the top painted in black. Well, I like the idea of the top painted in black, but I think I'm gonna leave the striping all the way down to the bottom. Of course, you can use any kind of outdoor paint you wish, but I'm just gonna use some rattle can quick drying paint so I can get this done a little bit quicker. I first sprayed a white base coat on the lighthouse. And while that's drying, let's see if we can attach these posts together. The original lighthouse setup had the small posts in front and the two large ones behind it, but I'm actually gonna change it up a little bit and I'm going to have the medium and small in front with the largest in the back. Now you can use whatever you'd like to attach the wood together, but I'm actually just gonna use a hot glue gun. But don't worry, if that ever falls apart, I'm gonna have some rope wrapped around it as well, so it should stay together. Now you probably don't have to, but I just added a couple clamps just in case I bump this while it's drying. Looking back once again at the photos, if you look at the base of the lighthouses, you can see some rope wrapped around it. But right next door to those lighthouses, you can see some sports versions that actually have a double rope around it. Now I feel the double rope would probably look better in this setup, so that's what I'm gonna use. And this right here is some quarter inch sisal rope. We're gonna wrap this around it twice. In the process of attaching the rope, over here on the sides, just underneath it, I decided to add just a little bit of hot glue, just so everything will stay nice and in place. I then jumped back to the lighthouse and decided to tape this up, and boy was this a challenge. If you plan on doing this, prepare to spend some extra time trying to get the tape right because normally as you're wrapping something, if it was round, it would be just continually in the same shape. But as I went around the corners on this, it angled way off. So I had to do some surgery on the tape to actually get it to match up on the sides. So uh, just be prepared for that if you wanna do this. It's time to give White House a shot of black paint and hopefully this tape won't bleed. There's a few small imperfections where the paint seeped under the tape, but overall, it looks pretty good. Now the paint's still a little bit wet, but I wanna test it out. Let's see. Oh yeah, that fits and looks awesome. Now let's put the light in place. Yeah. Now it's time to decorate the top of these posts. On one of the posts, we decided to have a little boat, but instead of buying something, my wife actually made this little sailboat for me. We made a video for that, we have that on our second channel, and I'll link to that in our description just in case you're interested. And for the other post, I decided to give it a realistic touch with some rugged rocks. All right, I believe this will be the setup, and now it's just time to glue these down. And to do that, I think we're just gonna use some hot glue again. And in case you're wondering, the guy's excited, not scared. Now let's compare this to the original. Of course, some of these are a little bit different. For example, instead of a birdhouse, I did a boat. 
instead of the flowers, we did rocks. I just like to have mine a little more realistic because it is a lighthouse compared to more decorative. But that is totally up to you. Tell me what you would do if you had a chance to make this and decorate this. Just put those in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. And here's the next video we think you might like.